All right, Bill, I think you are the caller of 4277193. I believe if you need to unmute yourself, it's star six. Try that and see if you can unmute yourself. There. Bring can you hear me? Hey, there you are. We got you now. <laughs> Holy cow, technology. <laughs> One okay. How do we sound to you? Very clear, very good. Good. Hey, ready to go? I'd like to call the economic development meeting to order. Can I get an adoption of the agenda? Motion. Motion to approve. Motion been made and second to adopt the agenda. Need to approve the November 30th, 2021 minutes. Oop, call the call. The, oh, need a vote for the yep. agenda. Sorry. All those oh, in I, favor? I said so. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We took a month off. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Now I need to approve of the November 30th, 2021 minutes. Motion approved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the. November 30th, 2021 20, minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Now we're gonna go around and introduce uh, committee members and all the persons for the new ones that we have. Yep, I'll start off with, um, Bill, I'm gonna pick on you because this was coming from you and then you didn't show up to this meeting. So I'm gonna pick <laughs> on you. <laughs> We've got a, some new people and I think uh, the opportunity was just to Introduce everyone. Um, let you and if you know if you're on the committee, say that you're on the committee, or if you're just an older person who has voting rights on this committee. And then uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about, maybe if you have one thing that you'd like to see the economic development committee work on, or what you'd like to see something in the economic realm of value in the next five years of the city. Maybe that's a uh, smart thing. I'll start off with um, Jennifer, the administrator for New London. And I guess one thing that I'd be interested in is on economic value is um, just making sure that we're prepared for the Highway 15 project. I think there's something we can capitalize on that, on economic development value. And once the Highway 15 project gets done and underway, uh, I just want to be prepared that we can uh, capitalize on that, whether it's you know residential growth or whatever, to uh, promote us being closer to the valley. Uh, Mayor Mark here. In my economic impact is is I would like to work towards the uh, downtown revitalization and the huge impact that that's going to have towards the city of New London. Bernie Ritchie, I'm just a third ward alderman. I have no views right now. I'm just, I'm new at this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, Tim Roberts, uh, District 4 Alderman. Um, I'd like to continue to uh, support the businesses that we have in town and uh, make sure nobody leaves. <laughs> That's my, uh, try to do what we can do to keep them here. And if, you know, if we can grow uh, in other areas, I mean, definitely uh, look for ways to attract more business to town. Dave Dorsey, Chairman of Economic Development. Um, I'd like to what Mayor Mark said and really work on the downtown development because I think that'll make everything else go better. Uh, Elena Wolf, the high school a high school representative on the committee, and I think that with the downtown revitalization project, making sure that we continue to support the businesses that are going to be kind of within the whole mess of it all, but then coming back from it's going to be great. I'm April Kapitsky, the executive director of the chamber. I'm a voting member of the committee. Um, this is one of my favorite meetings to come to for obvious reasons. Um, what I would like to see come out of this group is a mission statement um, to see how we can progress forward and just make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, my name is John Hess. I'm the new District 2 Alderman. And I'm also on the economic committee. And I also second uh, that we should really look at a downtown when we're 
going through the plans and make sure everything, like you said, to keep the businesses that are here and hopefully make it attractive to get, you know, get some new business in the area. Fred Zog, uh, District 2 Alderman, uh, Vice Chair of Economic Development Committee. Um, I'd like to see some more uh, or more of our uh, commercial growth towards the south end of town. And, and also, uh, I just tossed around a thing, uh, our little logo says Dracula. <laughs> Maybe extend that little thing a little bit and, and build your ship here too. Encourage uh, help people to move in. Go ahead, John. Uh, my name is John Fache. I'm a first district alderman. My wife Ann and I own a small business in Mr. Ritchie's district. And I've been um, attending economic development. I am a committee member on the economic development committee. Uh, been attending this committee's <clears throat> meetings for a lot longer than I've served on it. And I've always saw the economic development committee as really um, a little bit more unique than some of the other committees. I've worked at this committee as an issues and ideas team. Um, uh, former Alderman Dave Morat was a famous man for saying, what, is, what can this committee do to help you? And that's a question he asked any industry or business leader that came before this committee whether it was to explain their operation or whether it was to get new ideas from them, Dave always asked that question. And I thought, I always thought that this committee was, um, had a little more leeway in, in thinking outside the box. And I like people's idea of everyone's ideas. One of my um, wishes in the next year for this committee is to continually, continually have that dialogue with employers and small business owners to look at work, workforce recruitment, retention. We always used to look at, we'd like to attract a new factory in town. Um, but right now, I think we're at a point where we'd like to keep the factories we have in town. And whether it's getting employee rides, the work that people and others have done with the developing the new catch a ride program, I really think this can be needs to look at every single factor to help companies here retain their workforce, whether it's retaining graduated seniors to our town, uh, to, hey, we've got people here, how do we put in your jobs? And so this committee, I think, has a really unique opportunity to, to look at what's going, what's working, um, to get What's in that workforce and what we could do to, to better it. Thank you. I'm Hans Thompson. I'm a member of the uh, committee. And we always talk about making New London a, a good place to work and also to live. And I think I'd like to focus on more of that live aspect and quality of life. Things that are going to make families want to move here, want to stay here, and um, provide the, the more robust workforce really that we're looking for uh, to meet the needs of companies that are already here and engage with them. Robert Esau, First District Alderman. To see us stay on point with the downtown because we're only going to get one chance to do it. And I think it's very important to do it right. Steve, since you're a voting member, well, you introduce yourself. Steve Moore, element for the district three, one, whatever it is this week. Um, uh, I would like to see this continue to work. Bill Bishop, you're up. Uh, Bill Bishop, been on the committee for probably four or five years. Uh, manager in the in the community, very active in the community, and and I think of economic development a little bit of what each person around that table had shared. And I look at it as we're really a a conduit um, for not only the businesses but true economic development, meaning 
the high school because that could be our workforce. That could be the the other residents of the community and really we're uh, a sounding board for what the true residents are looking to do in the community. We think it should be smart growth um, and calculated and, and really be a, like I said, a, a conduit for the, the mass, for the majority of the community. I think that's all the members of the committee, so. All right, thank you. Moving on to number five, Talent Development Conference. John? Um, thank you, Dave. I, this is something that kind of when we were having our month off, it came across um, through email. I learned, learned about the Wisconsin Workforce Development Association um, and a conference that they're having April 7th and 8th. And, you know, essentially it's, it's uncover ways to deal with the worker shortage in Wisconsin which we had a conversation about that in, in December as a committee. That was where I went really long. I didn't want to do that again tonight. But I wanted to put that out there. It's April 7th and 8th. Um, you should go for a day. You can go for two days, but it's in Wisconsin Falls. And I really like it. Somebody on the committee would be interested in going down there gathering some materials, there are four speakers, four keynote speakers, there's 15 breakout sessions. Um, it's like 200 bucks if you uh, registered before February 15th. One day attendees, it's $175. I know it's a bad thing for the year, we're a walleye fisherman. But, uh, I really, I, I wanted, I, I requested Chairman Dorsey to just put that out there that it's there. And there's a lot, uh, a lot going on in that arena right now. In fact, last week there was there's been legislation introduced uh, in the state. There's been uh, state of Wisconsin workforce development or workforce development is renewed and an effort and I just sent out an email today, I think to Chad and April about some workforce innovation grant possibilities. Um, there's this thing called the great resignation. Um, and that's one of the things that you'll hear at this conference at the workforce development at the uh, talent conference in April is is that really is that really the case? Is it really the great resignation, or is it a matter of retire, you know, retirement? And so you're gonna hear communities talk about things like uh, how do you how do you talk to somebody who's older workforce? A lot of people got scared during the pandemic and a lot of a lot of people just said, you know what, I'm tired of working five, ten more years. Don't want to sit still. I got scared the last year or two and said, you know what? I can't handle this team meeting. I can't, I can't make a team meeting. I'm going to get out of here first. But there, there are for a number of reasons people with flexibility. So at this conference in April, we're going to talk about flexibility things, ways to retain um, older workers and companies. There's, there's just a lot of things in those great club sessions. You're going to hear a lot of ideas. And and keynote speakers cover a lot of things. This comes back to our discussion in December where we can't just throw out this blanket statement and say it's just because people are busy. That's a, that's a cop out to a real situation that, that our society and our state's going to be faced with for the next 20 years and population numbers, everything. So please consider attending that conference. Um, and if not, um, I'm going to try my best to get down there and beg my wife to, to let me go for a day or two. And then I'll report back to this committee and try not to. The chamber banquets is seven. Ooh. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
I will also look into if they are going to, because I've also sent out some emails, I'll look out and see if they're going to record their sessions because that seems to work really good. If you can um, either maybe pay, pay a different fee and, and have access to that, um, or you can still gain from the speakers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, Wisconsin Public Television will have somebody there and it might take a few months after, but they'll, they'll, they'll broadcast some of those speakers. So I, I will look into that um, a little further and report back to the committee, but um, anything that comes across your radar in regards to that, I, I really hope that this committee stops and reads it. Um, Cause there's a lot of information and a lot of work being done out there. And if you just kick the can down the road and say, nobody wants to work anymore, you're not doing your community any service by doing that. There's some real serious things that communities can do, and they're going to be way ahead of either pulling industries out of our town or attracting industries of their own by keeping an eye on this workforce issue. So that was all I had on that topic. Sounds like a pretty good, um, class for somebody of this committee to go to. Um, I'm not a voting member on this committee, but I would recommend maybe paying for the admission. Uh, if somebody wanted to make a motion to pay for John's admission to go to it or anybody else would wanna to go to it, because I'd like to encourage uh, people of this committee to go to it. I think it'd be valuable to the community. I agree. There's training and economic development that we could use those funds for that. So I was gonna look at, you know, maybe one day because I knew the chamber banquet was going on. So I'll see what my schedule is and see whether one day is better than the other. And if I can get off of work on Thursday, I'm going to both. What's that? If I can get off Thursday, I'm going to go to both. I don't need to be at the chamber banquet. I'd rather Come on. go there. <laughs> oh, I'm I right here. Need, I need <laughs> just for this, <laughs> of all these guys that need to go to the chamber I'm just banquet, joking. at least alone, I don't have a business here. <laughs> hey, Dave, your most direct route is. We're up there and go out through La Toma and get 21 to 13. And Chula Vista is right Are you telling 13. me how to get to Wisconsin Dell? <laughs> yes. Oh, the Chula Vista is not down by Lake Dell. Well, oh, I know. <laughs> I've been there two times. I got little kids. <laughs> I'm going to only do play baseball. Oh, oh, no, we do other things. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, but yes, early bird registration, like Johnny was saying, February 15th. So. And I'll know by the 15th whether I can have that Thursday off. Ooh. All right, moving on to discuss bragging and marketing ideal. I will okay, start that one. So, first off, kind of leading into that discussion, I want to take the opportunity to uh, introduce Josh Bisky. Josh, please Josh is our new um, video and marketing producer for the city. So, I want to take the opportunity to put a name to the face and uh, welcome John or welcome Josh to our team uh, with that. Uh, and that kind of leads me into some marketing and branding in information. So, April, Josh, Ginger, and myself uh, just got together the other day and we just started talking about marketing efforts for the city. And the purpose was to start uh, some coordinated efforts between the city departments, the chamber. Um, and we, we came up with a possible branding campaign um, that we want to just kick around to you guys right now. Um, the neat thing is the slogan that we kind of came up with uh, can be used to showcase different things and different aspects of the city, uh, but it kind of ties it all together, which is kind of neat. Um, and I'm going to kind of go through some pictures here. Um, all the pictures that you're about to see um, are just brainstorming examples um, just to get the juices flowing. So don't pick on me for bad pictures or anything. But the cool thing is that all the pictures that you're about to see are new London pictures. So every single one of these type things um, depicts new London. And I will have a disclaimer out there. I borrowed some of these pictures from New London websites that might not be the cities. There might be some chamber pictures that I stole <laughs> from and, and other aspects, but these are just to get the juices flowing, but uh, kind of give you an idea of a branding uh, campaign that we want to kick around. So what it centralizes is around the slogan of has an address. And we just, we April was asking about um, for the uh, next tourism guide, you know, what, what type of slogan we can put on there. And we came up with has an address and we can kind of put different aspects in front of that. So in this example, 
um, community has an address and it's New London, Wisconsin. Um, and then here's an example of some uh, work that the Wolf River Art League has worked on. So creativity has an address in New London, Wisconsin. Commerce has an address um, in Wisconsin. Careers have an address and then we can start tying in th things with the school district uh, as well. Learning has an address. Growing has an address. Opportunities have an address. Thank you, April, for the chamber <laughs> picture, kind of showing opportunities for New London. <coughs> Education has an address. Goodwill has an address. I was trying to get the mayor in one of these, and he just you didn't turn turn into the picture of I think I got your wife on this one. Yeah. Right in honor has an address. I think the downtown. Discovery has an address. Teamwork has an address. Fun has an address. Relaxation has an address. Beauty has an address. Memories have an address. History has an address. Recreation has an address. Fine dining has an address. Respect has an address. Bernie, are you in this one? Probably. Standing right center by the hydrant. Mm -hmm. Tradition has an address. Smiling has an address. Shopping has an address. Traffic jams have an address. <laughs> that was kind of cool. <coughs> Screaming has an address. Nightlife has an address. Thank you, Johnny, for that picture. And then home has an address. So. Just some ideas that kind of we can we can capture, you know, has an address around a lot of different things and really promote New London. So it was just a branding campaign that we kind of came up with. Um, I think what we're going to do is, is take these back and, you know, Josh can centralize videos around this and do like a 30 second clip commercial around fishing or something like that. And traffic jams have an address or growing has an address or. I really like the nightlife has an address and pictures of, you know, different aspects of downtown. So. Um, I think what we're going to do is continue having a monthly meeting um, and just kind of centralize. We'll kind of maybe bring in different departments for some ideas, library, museum, police department, and, and we can do in our upcoming summer recreation program guide, we can do recreation has an address and, and do something around that. It can be videos, it can be still pictures like this and just something simple and just, but it's kind of a cool little branding thing to kind of put New London on the map. Cause I know this committee has talked about branding um, in the past. So, we just came up with this the other day and that will be a kind of a cool thing to run with. We will have to be careful um, and check every one of these because I do know I, I did some trademark um, searches and there are some that are trademarked out there. I think Hope has an address, Luxury has an address. Those are trademarks. So we'll have to just check every one that we before we run with one. Um, but I don't know, what do you guys think? Cool, yeah, no? I, I absolutely love it, Chad. I mean, you know, we've talked about this in two ways. One is to engage the residents we do have. And I think it really, as you were going through them, you know, you think about even us that have lived here, you know, or been here a long, long time, at least it, it gets your mind working in a different way. I love, I love, I love that concept. I love that plan. And like I said, every single one of these are new London and we can use that slogan to really hit different aspects of the city and the life and the community in, in, in London. So I think not even will it do good for people that don't live in New London. Mm -hmm. I think it'll do good for some that actually do yes. that forget we have all this here. Yes, you nailed it. How right many on the times head. I went past that? I never even thought to put it in that light. I've drove by that, what, three times a day for the last three years. Mm -hmm. Still just, you know, it is because it's here. You know, people forget. 
Yep. It's like that television show that's on every Saturday night where they highlight uh, Wisconsin. It's on at six o'clock, I think, or six thirty, and you highlight different Wisconsin. cities all around the state. And that's about what they're doing is what you're doing right here. I, I think it's a great idea. I, I really do. I think it's one that has a lot to offer, and a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. all the stuff we really do have here. Yep. Yeah. So if anybody has yeah, any yeah. ideas for any of these taglines, you know, let us know. We just came up with 27 of them. It wasn't that hard. You know, we just, we just did them out there. And I just threw a picture with them to kind of give you a, a visual of what that is. But, I mean, I can see downtown, you know, trying to, you know, promote fine dining in New London and then promote relaxation. On the, the, I love this picture for that. You know, relaxation on the river has an address. We have a Zoom comment. Yep. Bill? I, I, um, I love the idea. I think if we could combine a couple of these, and and I my mind just goes back to I I saw on TV last night that or maybe the night before Green Bay now is planning ahead for a 15 I think it's a 15 percent reduction in all school enrollment just because of population decline and I think that the school that we have is key to the development of of New London I think if we could market that somehow and a couple of those target the, the schools because I think of the key to the New London success is going to have you know it's got to have people we, we have to have the workforce there we have to have the the manpower and and the school's amazing and if we could tie that in with that more so to exemplify I think it would be great so that's it. Just we had an idea. We talk, think we'll run with it. It'll help, you know, centralize some uh, things for uh, Josh to kind of focus on. And like I said, if anybody's got any ideas of uh, one of those taglines that you can think of and bring them up, we'll probably. I'm thinking of the next uh, our little internal meeting. We'll we'll sit down. We'll grab a couple of these and see how we want to run with them. But so eventually, what you're trying to do is make a YouTube video or uh, some kind of pamphlet or something to promote new london is that what's the end game to making this i think a constant barrage of just how we can use this slogan so like josh and i were talking about the other day maybe we target you know five or six 30 second clips that depict <coughs> pride and honor or nightlife or something like that and he creates a 30 second video you know a commercial and we can put that on on facebook um april's got the tourism guy that came out she's already put Recreation has an address. That's already a start. Um, when Ginger puts out the summer program guide, we can put something has an address on it. And we're just tying this all together. Mm -hmm. um, different acts. You know, we can talk to the museum, the library staff. I mean, the school district. The school district. I mean, what together. type of things that we want to hit that really promotes New London and shows that New London is the address for for a lot of these things, or we have a lot of this stuff. So, I think just a way to kind of bring it all together mm -hmm. as as a slogan. You know, because I've heard different type of meetings in the past from the economic development committee you've talked about trying to come up with a slogan for new london yeah. um just, and I, you try to centralize it and kind of brand it you know just yeah. a simple branding marketing thing in october we just talked about uh we know on on our radar the billboards are getting faded they're going to have to be replaced and this is a perfect one for a billboard perfect. something has an address in london wisconsin yeah. whatever that is you know maybe we put johnny's picture up there there's plenty of other ones out there but nightlife i love that nightlife has an address i mean i can see that being a billboard is one. there any idea of expanding to a billboard and say oshkosh off of 41 or something like that new london i mean to promote new london i mean i know we have a couple in town but i don't know if oh, there's anything outside of town yeah yeah, yeah. really advertise yeah <laughs> I don't know if the committee's talked about that in the past. I know we own the ones that are out here, yeah. so that's why we have that. But um, that is not, that's not a bad idea either. It's something to look at. You know, and I think those digital ones where they put <clears throat> the digital signs, I'm assuming it's a lot more economical <clears throat> to advertise in those because it's not up there all the time, but it's something that flashes up there on those digital billboards. So if that's something we want to you know, target in the future too, yeah, it's not a bad idea. I think it's something that we can look into. I like that idea. I mean, at least see what the costs are outside of our city. It's pretty expensive to use one of the billboards. 
put some numbers in the paper and let's let's see. I'm just saying if you can get people to look at it, you know, it's like I, I love that you want to do this, but how are you going to get it in front of people's eyes? And people are going to be like, oh yeah, New London, I haven't been there in years. We should go fishing. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. We've had that all over media guy in here. We've, but first you have to have the message or the brand. Yep. The the ad that you or the what you want people to see, and then yes, you got to get people to look at yep. it. So little quick little 30 second clips of why nightlife in New London has an address right here, you know, centralized something like this, you know, Josh create a cool looking video with that and we, we, we spend a couple bucks I mean it's not that much to, you know, target market on social media, I mean 20 bucks 30 40 bucks it's nothing. Um, and then you're you're target marketing certain people um, outside New London with with those, uh, those branding or those marketing efforts that Facebook has out there so but yeah, absolutely. All right, moving on. Updates and reports. Business updates, April. Um, I have quite a few updates for you here since we met last in November. Um, I have seven new businesses or offices that have opened um, in New London. Boss Optimal Solutions, I believe she's going to, she's either, I think she may be open now. She's a, a an accounting and a QuickBooks business. She's currently in Appleton right now and she's expanded in New London. And she's leasing that small office right next to Modern Flooring. It used to be, um, I think it was an insurance yep. agent there for a while. So welcome her to New London. Family Flippers just went in behind Subway. They just opened the 1st of December. That's a, um, it's a, a couple sisters from the Waiwiga area. They purchase pallets from Target and Amazon and they sell them back to the community at half the price. And most of the, the product is brand new um, or it's opened and, and not used. Um, Events Everlasting is coming downtown um, right on North Water Street. They're ta she's taking over um, the building right next to the theater, three, 307 West North Water Street. She is um, a wedding planner um, and a florist. We have a ribbon cutting scheduled for her uh, next Thursday at four o'clock. So please come out and support her. Um, El Patron is a new Mexican restaurant that just opened up in the former uh, corner cafe behind us. Um, a trailer business came into town a few months ago, Fox Valley Trailers, right over by Subway. Um, I'm going to murder this name. Um, Ricaro LLC. It's a consignment store that is opening up downtown on North Water Street, 304 West North Water Street, right next to the print shop. It's the resident that lives upstairs. It used to be um, an immigration lawyer um, who has... Uh, he goes back and forth from Milwaukee and he's going to open up a business, um, a storefront later um, in New London. But right now he is working in Milwaukee. He's since moved out and Bricaro is now going to be um, setting up shop there. Wolf River Propane opened up an office at um, 315 Burton Road. That's a Racky Rome um, building. Um, MK Flooring, which is located downtown right now, is um, relocating to the former Dollar General. They had an um, accepted offer on um, that building. They'll be moving. It depends on if we can get somebody in um, that space, but their lease is up at the end of June. Um, sad news, cozy and sweet. Elena, is um, her pop-up shop will be closing in a, a few months here. She's going to be off to college. So we wish her well and thank her for doing business in New London. Um, there was a small boutique store over um, by Superloop called Bomb Bomb Boutique. She has closed her retail store, but she plans to bring in a hair salon. So we'll look forward to that. So lots of things have happened in the last couple months. More Beacon, things to come Beacon too. Beacon Street Deli too. What's that? Beacon Street Deli. Um, yes, Emily's Cafe. I cannot believe I forgot that one. Yes, um, Emily's Cafe just opened a couple <laughs> weeks ago. I heard they have an amazing fish fry and she's doing really well. It's nice to see something back in that place. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. I just, I feel like it's nice to just see a lot of this is coming from, is stemming from that Main Street Bounce Back grant. Chad and I are reaching out to businesses and people to try to bring them into New London or expand into New London. They have that opportunity that if they take over a vacancy, they can apply for that $10,000 grant. I know of five businesses just in New London that have applied for that and have received it just in New London. And that goes until the end of June. So we're trying to get as many people into town and take up these vacancies and they apply for that $10,000 and do business here. It seems like they're having a lot of success from the ones that have seen the new businesses and stuff. There's a lot of chatter 
that I hear about them and all positive. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Moving on to city administrator report, Chad. I'll just jump on April's coattails that uh, we've been working together, you know, trying to make contacts with the existing or potential businesses. Um, we've got a little competition every once in a while. We try to be the first one to make contact with somebody and go back and forth. But um, there's, there's several other ones that April hasn't even said that are, are in the work. So that's just exciting and, and really cool. Um, I think I documented we had 16 different contacts just in the last month with uh, new or existing businesses. So uh, that's really cool and exciting. Um, we're also working on uh, details potentially developing a TID number six district in the southeast portion of the city. Um, that's uh, in the industrial park. Um, just when you come into town on the um, northeast side, um, Titan area, um, Amcor area, we're looking at, um, there, there's a local business that's looking at some development there. So that's one tool that the city has to help expand a uh, local business. So um, we're working on potentially um, that homework and we'll be bringing that up uh, for consideration to uh, planning commission and city council to review um, that probably in the next month or two. So that's, like I said, that's a tool that we have that we can help um, with development and growth and uh, there's some exciting things going on. So that's something that we're working on behind the scenes as well. Uh, I think that's all I got. How are the other TIDs coming along? Uh, Randy Retzloff is under construction. If you go down there on uh, Beckert Road, um, he is starting his multifamily development. Uh, we're working with him and his engineers on uh, finalizing some designs for the road and then the single family development. So that's, that's pretty close to everybody's nodding their heads, thinking that the plans are looking pretty good with that. Um, the downtown district with SC Swiderski, um, our engineers and their engineers have both nodded their head pretty much on the utility relocation, the design plans for that. Um, there's site fill that SC Swiderski has identified. What we're waiting on, we wrote a neighborhood investment grant um, with the state, all this grant funding that's on there, we wrote a, a grant to help hopefully fund that utility relocate and mm -hmm. the um, site fill. Um, we find out about that grant in November. Um, if we do get that grant, we have an opportunity to use the TIF funds for other projects in the area, which is really exciting. Um, if we don't have that grant, then we go back to the plan that the TIF funds will, will pay and finance for, for some of those things. Um, but we're kind of waiting on that grant right now. And then that grant will help us dictate the terms of the developer's agreement. And we got to bring that developer's agreement back to council yet for final <clears> approval. So we're kind of waiting on that grant to see. You said November? Uh, sorry, uh, February. If I said November, the grant supposedly is announced in February. So in the next month. So kind of a wait and see with that. But uh, once we find out that, then we can continue negotiations on the developer's agreement. We'll bring that developer's agreement to council for approval. Um, and once that developer's agreement's approved, everybody's nodding their head, we will take the next steps to, to bid out the utility, relocate the construction to do that project in the site fill um, and continue from there. All right, we'll review potential agenda items for future meetings. I don't have anything right now. Is there anything else that committee members might have? Oh, that, I, uh, have a question. I have a question. Go ahead, Bill. When we, when we start bidding out the various projects, how much flexibility do we have with trying to remain local with the workforce and the, and the contractors? Does it come down solely price or is it, um, you know, if they're, they're going to purchase materials locally, are they going to utilize local services or how does that work? Just because I, I'm not familiar with it. Yep. So unfortunately, the bidding laws that we're bound to, everything over a $25,000, what they call public works construction project. So uh, a public works construction in the bidding terms is defined by a contractor supplying materials and labor to install something. So in this case, installing utility 
uh, pipes. So everything over 25,000, we have to bid out. There's requirements for bid bond, performance bonds, and other things like that. And we have to take the lowest qualified bid and pre-qualify contractors. So for example, if we have a roof project that we're doing, we can pre-qualify a, con a contractor to bid. And for example, if it's a rubber roof, that's a flat rubber roof, and we know we need to have a contractor who has experience in that, we can pre-qualify them and basically eliminate, say a residential roofer that has only done asphalt roofs on a house who has never done a rubber roof. So you can pre-qualify and eliminate people like that. But once they're pre-qualified, you have to take the lowest qualified bid for the project. And that's the Wisconsin bidding laws. And it, it, it basically does not allow for you to give favoritism towards a contractor or a local contractor or things like that. We can specify specific materials that a contractor uses. So we can specify a specific model number or product or things like that. But when it comes to the overall bid, you have to take the lowest qualified bid. Does that make sense, Bill? It, it does. I, I was just thinking, I know we've got some magnificent businesses, whether they're, they're asphalt construction in the community and you know the, the lumber yards and stuff like that and overhead doors. I was just looking at ways we could utilize those you know, creatively and legally. Yep. So if we had a, a carpet contractor, if we had a carpet manufacturer in town who made a certain carpet, we could specify that you will bid out, a contractor will bid out using this specific product with this specific model number, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes down to the installation, you know, the, the contractor who has the lowest qualified bid for both the materials and the labor has to be awarded the contract. So, okay, thank you. I was just going to say that ATV UTV thing um, has been great for the community. It's been bringing a lot of uh, outside uh, tourism into New London. And I don't know if we wanted to look on maybe expanding that or, you know, I know we closed down for the winter. Uh, if we need to revisit that or, um, you know, the Blackburn Trail, I know a lot of people have asked if that was ever going to be open to ATVs, UTVs. I don't know if that's something we can maybe look into or just find ways to expand that because I think that's a great way to bring tourism to town. That's public works, right? Funny you say that because I just yeah. talked to Mike Darrington <laughs> this morning because um, the public works, Board of Public Works said that they were going to review it after a year. So I just talked to Mike Barrington. We talked about the Board of Public Works agenda for next week. We have some other items. So uh, Mike decided what we'll just have probably in the next month, either March or April, we're going to put it back on the Board of Public Works for that one year review. Um, we were talking about maybe putting it on for next week, but we had plenty of other things going on. So um, we felt that next week or next month will probably be enough. But yes, we talked about that this morning. So given our introduction, uh, a lot of people brought up the downtown revitalization and, and the, the meaning behind that and, and the significant of the future of New London. Mm -hmm. um, what about bringing in um, our subcommittee and bringing everybody up to speed on, on the different committee ideas and let everybody know where we're at with all that? Because um, a lot of stuff. Project? Yeah. 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 So uh, as most of you probably are aware, we have a basically ad hoc subcommittee um, who is helping us with planning and, and aspects of the downtown project. That is required through the STP urban grant that we have. So we have this, basically it's called a public, um, public involvement. We have to create a public involvement plan. And the public involvement plan revolves around having a committee um, reviewing and outreach and things like that. So um, as of this point, this com that committee has met um, several times. Uh, I believe I brought, I know I brought to the council, but I can't remember all the committees I brought this to. Uh, we had an open house uh, in the summer. We did those dot votings. Remember all those dots that we said, do you want vintage? Do you want this? Do you want that? Blah, blah, blah. So we've collected that input. Um, we've briefly talked about lighting aspects. Um, Jason Bissett from New London Utilities has come in, talked about some lighting um, options. The last meeting, the most relevant one we had last Friday, um, we invited the reps, several reps from the city of Wapaka, the city administrator, Aaron Jensen, and the public works director, um, Justin Behrens, 
we invited them to the meeting because because Wapaka, you may or may not know, just completed their downtown project. So we brought them in to kind of say, hey, and, and they also ran their project under an STP urban grant as well. So it, it really was very <coughs> relative to what we're doing. Um, and they just went through their process, their planning that they went through, the public outreach that they went through, um, some of the design things. They stated that they started with the higher grandioso ideas, everything plan. And as they kind of got into it, they had to whittle it down because of cost. So they, they pulled them things out um, and they talked about different aspects with that, talked about the color concrete, the lighting that they, they had downtown. Um, they stated they had a lot of success with a weekly newsletter that they published along with videos for the progress of the project that gave property owners and business owners just, uh, it kept them in the middle for what's going on on a weekly basis. So I thought that was a, a good uh, point that uh, we should really strive for is just that weekly outreach um, with the project. Um, it sounds like they did not do any collective um, planning or campaigning to try to get people to use the downtown yet. It didn't sound like the businesses got together and tried to do, you know, show, showcase 30% off day or something. You know, there was nothing collectively that the downtown businesses did there. Um, they did say that uh, most of the businesses felt like everything went okay. There was still a lot of, still access to the businesses during the project. Um, it sounded like there was good communication. Uh, but that's kind of where we're at with that they highlighted a lot of things that unforeseen stuff like um redirecting people to behind the businesses how to get there in fun ways you know just some of the stuff that i don't we didn't really think of. but what i foresee of that committee or that group is doing the research and similar to the road with that group kind of did a bunch of research and they made a recommendation to the Board of Public Works and Board of Public Works and then Council ultimately decided what the road typical width was going to be. So a lot, a lot of these features, I think that this committee is going to research and do a recommendation to like the Board of Public Works. I mean, the Board of Public Works is going to be the, the ultimate government body and or council to make decisions. So depending on this is the lighting plan that we would like to see and this is aspects for outdoor seating that we would like to see. So I think ultimately that board, that group is gonna be a sounding board to make recommendations to the Board of Public Works for the final decision. And that's the kind of stage they're in now is we're looking at, um, do we go with lighting, what we're looking at for lighting the, and setting the budgets for what we're gonna get um, because there's a lot of different aspects that it, everybody's looking at. Well, is Joel Van Alstein's wife on any of these committees? Nope, she hasn't. She was real there. active in that downtown Wapaka on Main Street down there. Okay. I would think maybe she'd be someone that they should talk to, have to see if she'd be interested. That's actually meeting. a really good idea. Yeah. Yep. I'd also like to add too, I mean, to the people, the committee and the community that are listening and watching. Um, I recently had the opportunity, I was in Wapaka two times this past weekend and took a look at what they did and the different designs and, and technology that they put into their downtown. So when we had this meeting, it, it was pretty cool to, to listen and see what they actually did, which was way more than what I could see at, at one time. And then when I got the opportunity to go back through again, um, to really take in what they were saying was, was pretty phenomenal. And um, I, I encourage you to get out and walk down their streets and, and see the architectures and the the plants, the, the lighting, you know, the, we're in that stage and, and any input, I mean, you can drop an email to any one of us and all the input is as well taken in and, and, and advised. So, yeah, I just encourage everybody to go look because this is the most recent look that we have. In April, I won't put you in the spot, but I will. Um, they talked about the lighting and speakers mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but it was I'll have you throw your, your opinion on what they did with that. So um, each light post downtown um, contained um, an area where you could hang a flag. Um, they had cameras, music boxes on each one, flower hangers. And why am I forgetting all of them? The accent lighting. The accent lighting. So during Christmas, they could have um, red and green lights. During Halloween, they could put on, you know, orange and, and black lights so they could set the ambience and play music. And 
Um, the chain, those are all things that weren't included in the SPT, SP, SPT, um, S, what's the acronym? The grant. STP, um, STP. So what they did is they relied on the chamber. Uh, the chamber quickly raised $65,000 in Wapaka. That's, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so I just have my eyes open right now to see if we can apply for any grants to see if we can help out the project with some cool amenities like that. And a little bit of additional, also what they did is they, they stamped poems in, in some concrete which was also done, uh, I believe, by the chamber as well with mm -hmm. that money. And then they also did a, um, at the intersections, they wrote the street names on them, and that's also stamped in the concrete. Mm -hmm. and, and what else was, there was something else in that picture too. There's different uh, sculptures that yeah. they had. There's just a lot of, a lot of arts and but creativity. And that's why I, I, I stress get out take a stroll down downtown and really look at it. It is pretty neat, the, the intricate details that they've mm -hmm. done. So I've got a laundry list of things um, on our agenda. It's just kind of at the bottom of the agenda of all, it's just kind of a list of things that we want to hit. Um, you know, lighting we want to kind of discuss. We want to discuss parking. What, what can we do with parking? Is there more we can do? Um, bump outs is yeah. on the list. Yeah. Pack put bump outs mm -hmm. out. In, and in they the like downtown. them. They do. And I even the plow the drivers director. don't mind them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Which was surprising to me. Yeah. That was good hear feedback to hear. And they weren't perceptive to it at first. Right. right? But then they're after a couple of times, they're like not even there. Yeah. So we just got a laundry list of things. And we're, basically, we're going to be bringing up all these ideas as recommendations to the Board of Public Works. And this is part of that grant. We're required to do this outreach and this, uh, this, this public improvement plan. Um, to try and collect input and, and make recommendations and basically having more you know, stakeholders in the project. I just want to encourage some practicality in some of the downtown designs because of snow plowing and all the you know, mess that we have. We are smaller downtown than Wapaka. We have to take all that into consideration. I would love a beautiful downtown too, but we have restrictions. So absolutely. And that's why I encourage people to actually stop and, and take a stroll and, and really look at the differences. So when the, snow, like said, when the, the snow plow comes in, you lose another foot, two feet of your, you know, driveway. And so and we only have one chance to do this right. So mm -hmm. I agree. also, um, I know this is totally way off, but have we ever looked at combining the back alley into some kind of downtown revitalization? Um, you know, the river is one of our greatest assets. Uh, I know Green Bay always, they have a, a boardwalk behind their businesses downtown. Is that something that you guys ever looked into of not buying I mean, the back alley, which everybody seems to want to do? I wasn't, I've only been on the committee for, you know, probably as long as you've been an alderman for the most part. So I know there's been a lot of talk about the alley and there was coordination with just easements for access and use and whose ownership and whose maintenance. I know there was a lot of discussion, a lot of part strings involved in that. So um, if, if this committee feels like that's something we want to tackle and see how we can coordinate um, with the businesses and, and promote that more. Yeah. I, mean, I just uh, thinking, you know, if you get the grant and then you still have the TID, well, there's another, you know, what, half a million dollars, whatever you got. To, uh, to back to your question a little bit about uh, putting the walkway along there, it's, you're talking a lot of money because we were talking about extending the uh, Berniger walk and back of Saputo. And that bridge was actually raised up so you would be able to go underneath it. So they looked at putting a walk along there and making it so that it would be high enough so that you could walk on it when the water's high. And it was extremely expensive. That was when, when Kent was here. We looked into that a couple of times on prices. And I don't know if they must have it, some paperwork here around it someplace, but you're, you were looking at a lot of money. I agree with you, though. I mean, that's something that we can work with the, the businesses and, and, and that to to look at. Uh, maybe we can make it better than what it is now. You know, and, and that just sparked um, a thought because I've seen plans with a cantilevered ledge off the river wall for pedestrian access. I've, I've seen that. Plan. So there's been talk and planning. Oh, yeah. And discussion. Yeah. I'll see if I can find that and just send it out to the group. And there's there's plans. There's plans. The 80s. There's been discussions. Yeah, I've been talked about it. It's that's time. why they, they kind of put centralized. You know, that's been worked up like a garden every so many springs, I guess. Yeah. But it's there's definitely plans out there. Yeah. 
I just, I just don't have the personal history yeah. behind. Some yeah, of those it's been it's been hashed quite a few times already. So it was also going to be one of my questions. I was at back alley because when that downtown does get ripped up, that's going to be an access for a lot of people to get yep. through. And maybe we should look at the condition of that and try to tie that in with that, or maybe maybe even ahead of the time to do something back there to make it more accessible before the project comes because and you're and you're completely right that has been discussed it has been brought up on the conditions and and uh use and abuse and how it's going to get utilized but yeah there's no definitive answers on any of that yeah something we should look idea. into i believe yeah <laughs> and it's not like the city hasn't done anything because i don't have the dollar amount but they're the city just spent in the last couple of years hundreds of thousands of dollars in river wall repairs so i mean yeah, yeah it's not very facade improvement you know but it was structurally necessary to do some of those things so it, it all started when half the town downtown burnt down and tom o'connell actually did a great deal of research at the county about this but after that fire the state came in and said you need to have an alley back here because the buildings are built right to the river they actually had outhouses over the top of the river um well when that all burnt down then the state came in and said you need to have an alley access and then kent's big push was he wanted to do something back there and then business owners didn't uh it was a great endeavor of kent's to get them to agree with <laughs> renewing that easement or whatever remember that april mm -hmm. But, uh, I just remember he told me lots of stories about it. <laughs> yeah, I still live back there, and I remember <laughs> the, the fights over snow removal and that was the thing. Just getting all, all the business owners on the same page is was it was everybody's private was alley until they wanted mm -hmm. until they found out it was one point five million to fix the wall. <laughs> you know, but so yeah, there's a history <laughs> on that alley. <laughs> all right. So, Moving on to public comment. All right. Do you want to say something? Well, I was going to ask. Hmm? There's been a couple comments about how we only have one chance to do this and to get it right. So I guess I have a couple questions along those lines. How long do we expect this project to? have an impact like is it, it is the idea that every 50 years or so we redo the downtown or is it longer is it less we talked about what we think the city's needs might be for the next 50 years or what we would like the downtown to look like for the next 50 years like i i, I get the interest in things like lighting and stuff like that but what about the use and how we can be prepared now for decades in the future and what we want it to look like 20 30 years from now yep. time frame wise um just the materials if all goes well we wouldn't this isn't for sure yet but um, we would like to do a concrete deck for the road so that it's concrete, which would extend the life of that. So you're probably talking 50 plus years before we really even have to think about, you know, something like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, this is going to be beyond our lifetime before there's going to be a major reconstruction again. So and to your point, it's going to be long-term with that. Um, so, and we, we've talked about with our committee, where we want to go with things. I mean, we're, we're talking about if you have ideas, if you want to be a part of that group, anyone, absolutely. I mean, it's, it, it's made up of downtown business owners and invested property owners and such. So that, that's who's we're trying to collect as much input from business and property owners because they're the ones that are their stakeholders for the project. Kind of to your point is uh, in the future, how far away it is, I don't know. You're looking at electric cars. Now, do you want to have charging posts on the main street getting to where you're talking about future future needs and i mean i don't know how far along this is from electric cars but it sounds like not too far so is that's another thing has that been talked about enough that's a perfect example and that's a yeah. great example because yeah we have 
mentioned it. We didn't put much okay. thought into that yet, but we've said, you know, electric cars, do we need charging stations? Yeah. And it might not be the need to install those charging stations right now, but maybe it's just putting conduit in the ground to easily sure. add those facilities sure. in the future. So yeah, I mean, to be flexible and to be able to add those facilities, absolutely. All right, review the next meeting date. Uh, let's see, the next regular meeting time would be February 22nd at 5.15. I need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. All in favor? Aye. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.